Well, guys, it looks like the media has done a full 180 and we're back to talking and discussing the idea that we're in 1929. But are we really there as traders and investors and should we be worried? Today, we share what Tom Lee believes will happen during the month of October, which might surprise you. And we take a look at the flow starting to come back into the world's biggest hedge, the US dollar. Also, what's going on in some of the markets that have been, let's say, not performing well in recent times? It looks like breakouts could be on the horizon while the biggest short squeeze just had one of the largest trades ever recorded. We suspected that China might be over for now. Maybe we just got the proof. Let's take a look at what Sneaky Wall Street is up to right now. We'll see you in a moment. Well, welcome back, everybody, to The Daily Show, where we discuss stocks, commodities, and cryptos together. My name's Tom, and today we've got a lot of information to sort out and, of course, some big flows to go through. You will love what we're seeing in the dark pool activity. Let's go through, though, Tom Lee's kind of prediction here for October. Now, it's pretty much in line with what we've been discussing. The idea that you should be a little bit more terrified in October is probably valid. You can see here in similar situation setups, Tom Lee has found that only 22% of the time markets are actually up. And October has been down seven of the last nine times with November coming through with the goods. Now, this is good information. And of course, we should be bringing this in line with our technical analysis that we'll look through later on. Does it make sense to the options flow as well? We'll check that out soon. But as Ryan Detrick says, and as we've been sharing with the data recently, you still need to look at it in the picture of the overall next three months. At the moment, it looks like the markets are trying to price in a no landing, soft landing style situation. And in similar stats where we've had five month win streaks since 1950, usually you've had a pretty good next 12 month period. You can also see here that whenever we have these types of periods where we've had 10 of the last 11 months up, again, it tends to mean that strength ends up being more strength in markets. And of course, there will eventually be some type of black swan. But as we've thought about and we've looked at, we're not seeing some of the weakest signs yet. I do have ways of reading this. And at the moment, the bonds market's not freaking me out. Neither is leverage. Neither is, of course, the massive amount of liquidity that's going in thanks to the PBOC and the Federal Reserve. They're pushing along basically a slowing and lagging economy. And this is what happens. Often these kind of late bull cycle or mid to late cycle kind of markets, they tend to lead into these periods. And you can see here, Tom Lee is also using some of these no landing style scenarios to forecast that the next three and six months could have a 100% win record behind them. So has Tesla shown us something here about weakness in the economy? Well, they released their figures. And of course, most Tesla People that love Tesla will be like, yeah, it's pretty good. Deliveries were 400 and basically 40,000. They made a little bit more in terms of the cars. And the market eh, didn't really love it, but didn't hate it too much. It was down about 3% by the end of the day. Now, AJ over on X has some great data stats to do with Tesla. And I always like bringing them up. So shout out to him. And you can see here that it, this is tracking the Tesla vehicle deliveries. I guess it's stable. That's what I would say there. And when you look at energy store de deployments, that's actually been improving over 2024. And you can see here that I believe the 73% year on year uh, increase and decrease of 27% quarter on quarter was already flagged. So currently it looks like the volatile fourth quarter is going to be flagged as well. So basically we're going to expect better than it was, but still up, down and all around in terms of energy storage deployments. And this is something that the market is starting to look at. Now, AJ did post some of his thoughts, and I think these are pretty cool. So we'll just quickly read them out. So the item which stands out to me is the low other model numbers, which looks low given expected CT ramp. This suggests that the CT ramp is slower than expected, and the S slash X sales are decreasing further. Other models increased only 1.4K units quarter on quarter or plus 6%. It's also good to see that lease share is still relatively low at 3% of the 3 and Y, which is unchanged for this quarter. It's also good to see the production was only 7K units above deliveries. This limits the cash burn and overproduction slash inventory increases. So basically, the management is going pretty well. Overall, he describes it as slightly disappointing, but generally speaking, it's okay, and he doesn't really think it's going to change too much. Now, in my opinion, obviously, we look at flow. We look at movement here on the channels, and I'm not really too interested in these figures, but I thought I'd bring them up for you. The reason why? 
Because with Tesla, we always know that's going to be hype and non-hype style scenarios. And that's going to change the needle in terms of the overall earnings. So I would say this is a neutral, not really hype. Obviously, we come into the 10th of the 10th moving forward, which could still buoy the price of the stock. I'm getting a lot of people coming through and sending me some information, which I'm collating at the moment to hopefully show you what the maybe super bull case could be if the market does like it. But we do need to remember that we're in a market that's overbought at the moment. So there is a chance that if we can't clear $263 for Tesla, that things might actually not improve on the stock for now. Now, we do have some overbought signals. We've shared in our previous video the idea that the market was too far above things like the 50-day moving average and the 200. And whenever that's happened over the last two years, we've usually seen a decline to the 50 DMA. Uh, we also know the McClellan oscillator here is on the overbought. And we also know that our bullish percent index is also overbought, which we share over on X. Links in the description down below. Bull bear spread, I would guess, hit around 30% after the news last week. And most people probably feeling pretty bullish about the markets. But we'll share our thoughts on this in our Thursday, my Friday here in Australia close. So once that happens, once we get the new results, we'll definitely share it. Now, I've got a little bit of sad news to share with you. I think the utilities trade might be going into consolidation. Now, if you've been watching the channel all year, you would know that I have been almost a frantic bull on utilities and gold. And in particular, this and China have been some of the areas that I've been specifically looking for some overperformance in terms of investments. But it seems like everyone has woken up to that. The Bank of America Global Fund Manager Survey positioning versus history is showing that everyone loves utilities. But guess what they don't like? Yeah, that's right. They don't like energy. But maybe we're starting to like that a little bit, a little bit more now. And also, it looks like they don't like emerging markets, which have been breaking out of commodities. So as usual on this channel, sometimes we have to look for rotation. And this doesn't mean that I absolutely hate utilities or anything. I still think it's got a pretty bright future ahead of it, even though it's the most boring sector in the world because, and thanks to mostly AI, but you can see on this chart the overperformance of utilities and the underperformance of energy. I think it's really demonstrated well here by duality research, and I like it very much. So basically 18.5% utilities has smashed it, it's kicked the, kicked the crap out of the S&P 500, and that is not something you usually tend to see. So uh, some very strong movements there, and as you know, this kind of really went along with our, a lot of our thought processes. Now, why could I say utilities might be going into a bit of a sideways market? Well, not only the technical analysis that we'll bring up later on, but have a look here at the moving average deviation. You can see that we are super above. Jason Gottford over on X saying that utilities are now trading 20% above their 200-day moving average. This has only happened once in October 2000, and it lasted for one day. Uh, that's not a great sign for my utilities for now, but I don't think it's as bad as this chart. Ryan Detrick also posting, actually, I think this one comes from uh, Dean Christians. And basically, you can see here that whenever we've traded super high on utilities, then we tend to move into a period of significant underperformance. 0.22% of the time this happens, and the annualized return is negative 20%. So, of course, I believe that utilities are going to buck this trend a little bit, but still, Pretty damning evidence when it comes to one of our favorite sectors. Some other data coming out, obviously, that we've shared before. These are all these extra, basically strong months end up causing further strong months. Again, feeding upon themselves is one we shared in our previous video. This week's non-farm payrolls. Now, if you're not aware of it, this is what JP Morgan believes is kind of going to happen in terms of percentages, kind of their game plan and what they think. So if you're watching, if you're interested in knowing what the jobs numbers might do, this is what JP Morgan thinks they are. But I would always take that with a grain of salt. Now let's talk about China. Now we alerted you guys, and of course we've all been doing this together, to China in terms of flows first. We saw the TA improving. Then we already knew the short interest was superiorly high. So what has this been? It's been a massive short squeeze on the Hang Seng and Chinese markets. And you can see here that the 10-day advance decline has gone ballistic. Now, that's a great sign if you were in it early, but I think maybe the short squeeze is over for now. Now, there are a few reasons, mostly dark pool related in the moment, but basically this is probably a turning point for China. Now that they've started this, of course, central bank methodology of saying we're going to do whatever it takes, we've already seen probably about a 40 basis point GDP improvement thanks to monetary flow. 
we will see the market crack it multiple times over the next year where it says, we want more, we want more, we want more, and it will sell off. And that's the type of nature of these central bank moves. They're basically moving off, well, you could say like the sovereignty of the country. So in this case, what is going on? Well, we've seen the squeeze. We're probably now going to see a bit of consolidation. It hit that great technical level as well. So yeah, it's a decent sign that the run is now done. And remember, it went from being one of the worst performers to smashing the S&P 500 in like a week and a half. So that's how fast these markets are moving. Possibly one to put in your brain to realize how fast markets can move when they decide that this is the bazooka that's really going to save it. Reminds me of 2020, actually, when the Fed went absolutely ballistic. Speaking of the Fed and central banks around the world, they're back on the train of liquidity. Now, we've talked about this from Bitcoin's perspective, and this can be a great sign for the Bitcoin hodler. Now, it hasn't come through up October, currently cancelled, of course, but we do still have confidence in the idea that Bitcoin could have a decent quarter. So October, November, and December have generally been positive if you see a positive September. We did see a positive September. Remember, this is a little bit outdated. But generally speaking, I think there were too many people sharing this stat. Got to shake out those weak hands first. And I don't believe that uh, Bitcoin is looking horrendous. I just think that it's uh, doing what it always needs to do, which is shake people out. Now, we mentioned that there might be some large trades, FXI. Huge trades on the way up through the squeeze. And now at the resistance, a monster. The number one biggest recording of the last two years, a top trade coming through FXI, basically showing us just before the drop, that maybe it's exhausted. Now, there are some other signs of worries as well around some of our favorites at the moment, which have been gold, because gold is starting to get massive cluster attacks at the highs as well. And this is kind of thinking exactly what we've been saying, which is we might be in what we call a pit, a pullback in time or a relatively speaking correction. Now, that could be good for people that have missed out on gold's rally so far, get a little bit of a pullback. Of course, I'm not really too worried about it because of course we look for 3000 plus on this and we have done all year and at this stage it just looks like it might have had its move and everyone's become you know aware of it this is the beauty of markets they always do this type of thing everyone gets aware of it it has a bit of a breather then everyone hates it then it goes up you know rinse and repeat and that's what we do here on the channel and we've obviously navigated it together for many years. So it's been great to do it with you guys. Let's now talk about cues. We're seeing some of these similar things happen. Of course, it doesn't mean, oh, wow, instantaneous sell-offs. But as we saw with Tom Lee's data, it's pretty damning towards the downside for October for at least a period. We've also seen Rubner uh, <laughs> coming out from Goldman Sachs and saying, hey, I've got a 6,000 target for the end of the year, but I think it's too low. Well, this is the type of rhetoric that we're getting through the internet right now. And he obviously is also a believer of a bit of weakness in October, which will then start back up in the back end of October in terms of the November run. Again, I always look at what are they doing and it looks like for now anyway, unless the market is able to get, and I think I'd also pay a lot of attention to VOO on the charts, unless the market's able to get above these levels and go to a new high, I would say for now, it looks like the bears are trying to get control of this market, but they haven't done it fully yet. So let's have a look at the rotation. Semiconductors up over the last 24 hours, good old energy coming back through. And of course, ITB being on the bottom end. Last five days, gold being the worst performer. That makes sense. It's it's having a bit of a breather for now. Utility is still beast moding, but I still think that's probably hitting its highs or getting close to the temp highs for now. And energy coming back in a big way. The worst performing sector suddenly becoming close to the best performing. A big rotational switch there off. Maybe you could say geopolitical news, but I just think it's flows and we're seeing flows starting to appear back into it. Let's now take a look at the S&P 500. Has it done enough to get us 5,600? Well, of course, we don't really suspect that there's a monster crash happening in October. I mean, it's possible it could do this or even this. Uh, But at this point, yeah, it was a decent pickup over the last 24 hours. We always like to look at the smaller time frame. So let's have a look at how the market actually traded. It kind of gapped down through the futures, rallied back up, wasn't unable to make a new higher high above 57.30 and just kind of floated around for the session. So I would say there's not too much to get out of that. Now, if we look at the futures, you can see here the futures look like double wick rejections. So what we can now do is we can mark out this low And we can kind of say here that we're at the point of supply. We're at a point where bears will try to knock it down around this level. Obviously, if they're able to get it back below 
the previous low of the current session, which is just there, then that could be a big deal because this would basically really bring in that 5600 narrative. It would start to get negative gamma, which we've talked about and we'll talk about in a moment on the lower end timeframes. And of course, things could weaken off. Uh, now, don't put those options high and low levels in today. Those, those ones will be wrong. But um, generally speaking, we do update those. But for whatever reason, I forgot to do it. Now, let's move over to the S&P 500 and have a look at these flows themselves. So remember, we're looking at a possibility of going below the previous session low. That then to bring in negative gamma, that would make perfect sense to what we're seeing here on the options charts as well. 56.80, a key level to watch over the next 24 hours. And our favorite, which is 57.50, continuing to be a massive blocker and core wall. There's a lot of people that are trying to go bullish past that level. I think they're just going to probably lose their positions each session. That's generally speaking what's been happening here. The core wall of 57.50 has been very strong now for the last week as we see more and more signs of exhaustion temporarily in the technical analysis kind of side. Now, why do we like 5600? Well, look at this, the 4th of October. What is that? A massive put wall, you say? I think so. So 5600, 5610, we're starting to see quite a lot of stacking on that level. And that, again, gives us where we might see temporary relief should the markets continue to sell off. And at the moment, even though, of course, the multi-months and all of everybody else would be probably looking quite bullish, I think we're at a dangerous position for a day trader and a scalper or even a swing trader if you don't know how to risk manage. Because as we've seen, you know, there are some data stats going towards the negative side. We're seeing some dark pull activity. We're seeing a little bit of over exuberance and everyone saying bull, 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 bull. And the markets love stealing money from us. So, of course, they may be setting up that way. Let's have a look at the CTAs versus S&P. You can see here that we've got a decent amount of little miniature selling on the S&P CTAs. More likely than not, doesn't mean too much. and won't give us edge. But I do notice that Brent CTAs have started to, of course, improve. Now, we already saw this last week, and it looks like at this being delayed, I would say there's probably a strong case to say that there's some decent CTA action in the bull side now for Brent. We'll look at that in a moment. Now let's move over to NVIDIA. NVIDIA 120, 125 continue to be the main strikes. You can see them here. Again, NVIDIA will break out technically and positive gamma at some point in the future. We did share over on X some very healthy looking signs about Blackwell, which of course, uh, you know, the CEO is saying is unprecedented demand. So, of course, he's going to say that anyway. But realistically, we know $100 trillion of CEOs were there. Uh, we've got to feel bullish about the kind of prospects of the next 12 months of inventory being sold. And that's what's happening with NVIDIA. But let's have a look at Tesla. 240 on the put wall and 2 kind of 60 for the break. Uh, we will need to look at this on the chart. So we'll do that in a moment and kind of bring it together. But let's discuss utilities. Is the run over for now? Well, I did the legs and it certainly is predicting uh, that basically we've topped for this period of time. Now, of course, we used a flag before, which you can see here, and this was pretty much my target if I was trading. Now, of course, trading and investing are different, so investors aren't going to really care, but uh, traders are certainly going to care about this target. Do you think that utilities is done for now? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. High yield junk bonds fell a little bit further down. Again, a little bit of a warning of possibly temporary weakness overall very strong and does point towards those next three months being overall bullish. US dollar broke up. This was actually a pretty easy trade for scalpers and day traders. Uh, very good continuation style pattern. Not quite in the gap fill yet, which will get us to around 10170 guys. And then if we breach that and go up, wow, the dollar is going to go ballistic. And remember the dollar broke our 20 moving average on the downside. So this was already a very strong idea and it looks like it could be even heating up. Non-farm payrolls will ultimately be the decider of that, though. I'd say we stick around that resistance for non-farms, and then we find what's going to do. Speaking of resistance, copper is in sideways action for now after its initial move. I'm going to just kind of keep watching that one. And gold, again, is kind of just sitting around waiting for the next big move. I wouldn't really be too bullish on new positions until maybe 2560 or even 2487 from a technical base. We'll see where that can happen. Silver is also consolidating. We're still covering it, but I won't mention it too much until we break out. So obviously we're still long long and medium term bullish, uh, but the short, short time frame we're neutral and that shows itself on the charts. We hit our TPs, it was a great time. Now let's move over to oil, long leg doji. 
So unfortunately, it was unable to close above our downward trend line, but we're putting pressure on for, of course, the bulls. I'd say this is going to be a post non-farm payrolls job as well. So patience, react, don't predict. Now, I am making a little bit of structural prediction in terms of seeing more that I like than don't like around this base. Of course, we've discussed the idea that whenever you're a trader, you should be, or even an investor, you should be looking at scaling. That's what the big guys do. Why wouldn't you do something similar? So it's caution, but at the same time, what a critical level. And we may be breaking on the upside very soon if that can keep holding. We'll see. Tesla, mm, not the best result, obviously, not what the market wanted. And it has shown signs of exhaustion. I mentioned this in our private live stream. I said, oh, that result's coming uh, pretty much. I, I don't think I like it anymore through the session because we just keep failing to make uh, higher than that 264, 265 level. And this is a problem because the daily needs to get through to get that positive gamma back inside. Now, if you are bullish into the 1010 event, of course, you're looking for 280, maybe even 300 if you're feeling really bullish. 264 should activate that. We've just pulled back down to the daily 20. So I'd like to see this continue on the way up. I think Tesla's going to do whatever it's going to do separate to the market. It's been lagging for a long time, so it can be separate to the S&P if necessary. NVIDIA, nothing much to report here. Little bit of accumulation base possibilities. If NVIDIA bounces off here and breaches 129, 130, that's going to be, of course, a huge breakout. We've been pulling back now and sideways for the one to three months we always talk about when we see these things. So really, could be time. Maybe it's November. I will bring some stats to NVIDIA soon, though, that I think you'll like. Now, we did notice that HSI smashed our mass, our, our, what I thought would be probably month or two months target away. Turns out it was uh, about a uh, five days. So <laughs> it really hit it. Went from 19,645 to 22,657. Actually nailed the top. We saw the big trade and then it's, of course, fallen back down. I'd say this goes into consolidation for now and uh, maybe the dip buyers will get what they want. But uh, yeah, we'll keep assessing this situation as we go through. Uh, now let's move over to the Russell, which you can see here, the Russell 2000 falling a little bit, still weak, no breakout. Uh, Tom Lee, obviously very bullish on this. Uh, we actually looking for flows at this point. So we'll see whether we can get back to the most traded zone. I think the S&P 500, 5600 level, 5620 will be the most important level to really link with all of these, including the NASDAQ, which I'd like to see come back down to the second support, which sits around 19.4. So that should line up pretty well with 5600, 5610. That's where I expect a bull to potentially try to re-engage with the markets. And remember, that may not seem like much, but that's actually a pullback of around 4.5%, which is fairly considerable whenever you're looking at the standard pullback sizing, which is around there. So again, second support is what we're looking for for now. When we move over to Bitcoin uh, or Bitcoin, uh, we can see here a pretty crappy looking daily candle, but I don't think that's really too bad. We end up making a lower low. I wanted it to go down to 50, 59, kind of six. Uh, I'm looking for first signs of strength, which is up here. I think day traders are going to like trying to buy through here and buy dips off that and then aiming for 64K. I think it's probably the most obvious for now. It's not quite at like, wow, I think this dip is perfect yet or anything like that. Remember the other day we thought that 63, 63.5 was pretty strong. But as we always do, we have the patience to wait for replication. And in this case, uh, it just fell off to the low and didn't give the didn't give the signal. So we'll see whether 62.4 can actually be retaken and that will be a strong sign. Also notice here the two hour 20 is becoming kind of dynamic resistance for it. So that'll be another good sign of uh, breaching through that. In terms of news, we have ISM services PMI, which is quite important because it needs to counteract the manufacturing PMI, which sucks at the moment, which obviously has a lot of people saying recession is here. And then of course we have non-farm employment change. So basically the NFP numbers Generally speaking, these are the most important. These will move the markets. At the moment, the, the literally the Fed only cares about one thing. It's not inflation. They care about the jobs market. So the dual mandate is now moved. Inflation now is jobs. We only care about jobs. That's pretty much what they say. And we'll see what happens next. Thanks so much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed today's video, then please remember to subscribe. Smash that like button. We'll see you in the next one. And of course, the jobs numbers will be all important to the weekly closures. Uh, hopefully we do get a little bit of a pullback here in October. I think it would be healthier for the market. But uh, yeah, I think the 
three months is still looking pretty damn good. If you're interested as well, sign up for our courses. If you specifically want to know about replication trades, try check out our day trading masterclass. I think you will very much enjoy it. Bye for now.